on Dr. Oz. If you want to feel more focused and energetic, Dr. Oz has your three-step plan to cut down on sugar, uncover the seven hidden sugars in your diet, and wean off the sweet stuff. Plus, Tony Robbins has helped millions conquer life's toughest challenges. Now, he's sharing his biggest secrets to help you manage your number one stress, money. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. When people cut their dependence on sugar, it is absolutely amazing. They describe feeling more focused, energetic, and slimmer. But for everyone that's thinking, oh, that's fantastic, but I could never actually quit sugar, I want you to listen up. Because today, we've got a three-week sugar step-down plan that makes it easy to wean off the sweet stuff. Please welcome best-selling author of The Sugar Impact Diet, JJ Version. Now you make the argument that there are these seven hidden sources of sugar. You all gonna recognize this, that are in everyone's diet that we need to start with, uh, be yes. at least aware of. They are grains, roots, fruits, no fat and low fat dairy and diet foods, sweet drinks, dressings and sweeteners. But here's the deal, we poem. all know, I know, <laughs> I've got that down, but we all know that cookies and sodas and cakes are a problem and we're avoiding them. That's not the problem. The problem is these sugar sneaking into places we'd never expect, like the green smoothie, the marinara sauce. I mean, take this fat-free yogurt. This fat-free yogurt that we're eating trying to be healthy mm -hmm. actually is the same sugar as two and a half glazed donuts. Oh my goodness. Crazy. So you actually take this philosophy one step further, you break down all the sugars, because they're not created equally, right. into three different levels. There's high, medium, and low sugar impact foods. I'd love if you can just explain, because there's so many different ways we can get these. Right, and that's the deal, is that all sugar wasn't created equally, and it's really about knowing which sugars to choose and which sugars to lose based on their impact. Is it making you more energetic, or is it making you crash? And then I rated foods high, lose it, yep. medium, and low sugar impact. I made it really simple. There are these simple scales and you just taper on down. All right, so we got a three week program I'm gonna give you today as promised, which will take us from these high uh, impact sugar foods right. to the lowest. And then we're gonna have a maintenance program for everybody to stay on if they wanna stay on it for the rest of their life. Okay, let's get to step one. I love if you can show us how to make the swaps and what's the sort of philosophy for the first week? This is so important because in the first week we are gonna taper from high sugar impact to medium sugar impact. And because the foods are similar to what you're already eating, you're not even gonna miss it. But here's where it might be a little different because what I find with most people is what they're having for breakfast yeah. is dessert, yes. right? That's right? That muffin in the latte, <laughs> that's a cupcake and a milkshake. So <laughs> once you do that. Muffin in a latte, yeah, it's so the, true. It is, and so you have, I mean, look at what the muffin's wrapped in, right? That's it's right. a cupcake and you have that in your, your blood sugar goes on this roller coaster ride all day long. You can never get off of it. So we're not going to do that. So what we do is we start the day with this lovely berry coconut shake. It's got protein powder, coconut milk, chia seeds, and berries. So you just have nice, steady energy. Good. And then for lunch, if you want to have a wrap, instead of using that white flour wrap, we're going to do a rice tortilla wrap with some wild salmon, lots of vegetables, mm -hmm. right? Can yep. never eat too many vegetables. And then if you need a little snack, instead of having that fat-free glazed donut yogurt, we are going to have <laughs> the coconut yogurt or some Greek style yogurt, some fresh fruit, and then some nuts. And then for dinner, a grass-fed beef patty. And instead of the white potatoes, we swap from high sugar impact white potatoes to sweet potatoes because they've got more nutrient density. In so, I mean, I talk about changes of this nature quite a bit. I really do think the average viewer says, I get this part. What I don't get is how do I avoid the mood swings, yes. the sugar ups and downs, the cravings that come when I don't take in as much sugar as I normally take. When I look at most of these programs, they really set you up to fail because they go, okay, cut the sugar out. And you go, boom. You know, if sugar has been sneaking into your diet, your body now relies on that sugar for energy. And if you just take that sugar out, you're going to crash and go searching for the cookie. You've got to taper. High sugar impact to medium sugar impact is the way to start. So we put one of our viewers on the program. I was curious how it would work. Colleen just finished step one this first week. So Colleen, I get with the honest truth here. Yes. Was it hard? Were you craving things? Were you moodier? Okay, let me tell you, it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, a lot easier. The first couple days I missed my chocolate, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but um, after a few days, I noticed that I didn't have brain fog, that I felt a lot less moody and I felt great. Easier than you expected. A lot easier than I expected. Are you ready to graduate to the next step? Absolutely. Right, How much weight have you lost so far, by the way? Seven pounds in six you have. days. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Woohoo! Got a lot of, a lot of very excited viewers <laughs> for that. All right. That was good. 
<laughs> Georgia, Dave, you can lose seven pounds in six days. That you want to, you want to keep going. Yes. The, the so. next step is a two-week program where you're a little stricter. This is the big deal. We tapered, we're ready for this, but this is where we're gonna teach your body how to move from being a sugar burner to a fat burner so you have nice, steady, sustained energy and no longer have those cravings. So we've pulled out the medium sugar impact foods, we've dropped down to low sugar impact foods, and we also pulled out the fruit. So we're gonna Why start the, the day. Well, this is interesting because fruit, of course, fruit's healthy, right? It yeah. comes if it's wrapped in its natural packaging. Yes. Yes. Right. Without, right? A food, without a food label. Right, the fiber and the nutrient density, it's great. But the challenge is a lot of us think of fruit as free food. We're eating it all day long and we're getting fructose in so many other foods. And when you get too much fructose, it goes, your body gets really good at taking it straight to the liver where it's making fat and making you hungry at the same time. So we're gonna make your body worse at transporting fructose. So we take it all out this week so you can start burning more fat and having better energy and not having the cravings anymore. Does that sound good? It sounds fantastic. Okay, so this is a cocoa <laughs> cashew shake. It's delicious. So you start the day again with a shake, not with dessert. Taste that seafood. Cocoa. Like yes, cocoa. let's see. Well, I can tell you I'm gonna yes, like it. It sounds cocoa. like chocolate because That's right. it actually yes. is in chocolate. Delicious. Absolutely Good. delicious. Pass. Okay. Pounds are coming off. Good. Ah. But you know, the nice thing about this is it's got protein, healthy fats, lots of fiber, so it's just going to keep you energetic, and it tastes good. It really it's does. It's got chocolate. We love that. Then we're going to have a roast beef veggie wrap. And here's what's important. We've got some beans and feta in here, too, and those beans are a nice, slow-release carb to keep your energy steady all throughout the day. If you need a little snack, we've got a turkey, bacon, tomato wrap. You might not even need it. You might have to remind yourself to eat now. Wouldn't <laughs> that be awesome? <laughs> and then chicken kebabs. These are yummy lemony artichokes and some lentils for dinner. It all sounds excellent. It and, all looks delicious. And by the too. way, if you need it, you can have a little dark chocolate. Okay. Yourself. You're allowed because it's low, <laughs> you're it's low impact. You get the 85% or higher, right? right? So you've done this now. We're three weeks into the plan. Obviously, the rest of your life has to continue. So what's the maintenance step of this? Where does this go next? This is where it's so powerful because you're going to add in a couple medium sugar impact foods each day and see how you feel. Check in with the sugar impact quiz. How's my energy? Am I gaining weight or is it staying the same? So you'll be able to connect the dots between how you feel and what you weigh, know how much you should be putting in a regular basis. But here's where it gets great. I took 700 people through the trial program and I took 700 sugar addicts through because I wanted to prove that you could get rid of your sweet tooth in two weeks or less. And what I heard from people is that when they got to this third cycle and then they tried a high sugar impact food, get this, this will happen for you. Okay. It just tastes gross. They lose their sweet tooth, <laughs> they get back control. So how much weight did you see people losing in this little program you have? Well, I don't even want her to hear because she's <laughs> gonna blow past this. The average person lost during this two weeks phase, they lost 10 pounds and a couple inches off their waist. But the bigger powerful thing there is they lost their sweet tooth because now you've got control. Now these, the sugar no longer takes you down. I think is a recipe for success long-term because you're changing everything, especially your approach to it. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> that will happen exactly. You did good luck with all this. All the recipes and the complete three-week sugar step down plan are on DrOz.com as well as JJ's list of all the high, medium, and low sugar foods. Be right back. Next, do you feel in over your head with financial burden and debt? Stop eating and drinking your worries away. Tony Robbins shares his easy strategies to curb your stress and live more prosperously. Master your money and gain financial freedom today. Next. A special one-hour Dr. Oz. Are you ready for this? I feel amazing. Life-saving stories. You are cancer-free. Life-changing facts. I want everyone watching out there to know the signs of a heart attack. People who saved their own lives and now are saving others. You have to save someone else's life after someone has saved yours. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Now, he has helped millions transform their lives with his inspiring approach to life's toughest, biggest challenges. Today, Tony Robbins is sharing his secret to take back control of the number one driver of stress, money. Please welcome my friend, Tony Robbins. How are you, brother? I've, I've never seen you run before. <laughs> That's so cool, have a seat. 
How are y'all doing? So, you know, I gotta say, just as, as a start, I, I think emotional issues around money are devastating. And frankly, money's become a bigger problem as obesity and the epidemic we have with that in America. Yeah. I would love to get a little bit of your insights about what it is that is causing this financial health crisis we have in America. Well, I think most people don't realize, but we know we get stressed from so many things, but money is one of the deepest ones. And I think it's because we feel the least in control of money. I mean, money is an expression of power in our lives, you know, what we can and can't do. And for many people, what's happened for them is when they feel out of control because it's so complex, where do I start, how do I go about it, I don't know what to do, I'm so busy. What happens is we end up starting to feel that stress and we start to eat, or some people smoke, or some people drink, or it starts to mess with your intimate relationship, and then everything gets messed up. And that all converts, as you know, to physical stress, which converts to emotional and physical health. You're taking a, yeah, you've taken the last few years of your life to write a book called Money Master the Game. It's an absolutely fabulous book. It's been a lot of effort putting together these thoughts. Why would you make that kind of investment? Well, because you know, my whole life, 37 years, I've, you know, I've been passionately obsessed with wanting to know how do you help someone change their life as quickly as possible? What are the breakthroughs? And there's only a few areas of your life that really affect the quality of your life. Your intimate relationships obviously do, your physical body, as you and I both know, your emotions, and then money. And what I found is when 2008 happened, I grew up in a really tough financial environment. I went out to get the card, it's gone, not because somebody stole it, <laughs> because we didn't pay it for it, right. somebody took it. No money for food. So when I saw people losing their homes in mass, when I saw people losing half their net worth, and I knew it was based on manipulation, it made me crazy. And I have unique access. I've coached one of the top 10 financial traders in the world, a multi-billionaire, for 21 years. And he's never lost money in 21 years. So I thought if I could learn from him and 50 other, other best people in the world and put in an action plan for a a millennial who just got out of college and they still have debt and they don't know what to do, or a mom trying to figure out how do I do this, being a mom and managing my life and my work and my kids, or somebody's trying to retire, then I'd have a real gift. And it took me four years, but now I've got these seven steps I can teach people. I want to take advantage of the wisdom you have about getting people to deal with their lives proactively. So it's right now, folks watching, they've got debt. They know the money coming in is not going to be as much as the money going out. How do you alleviate the stress that they feel this moment? They have to immediately take action. They've got to put together a plan. And I show them these seven steps. But it starts, quite frankly, inside your head. It starts with you saying, okay, I'm going to stop telling myself this story. Whenever I want to help someone create a breakthrough in anything, in their body, in their relationships, in their money, there's three S's I look at. Most people that want to change their body look for a strategy, a diet, something to do. And that's great. But a lot of people have the right strategy, but they don't execute it. Or they never start because they have a story in their head, a belief that says, I've tried everything, or I'm big boned. That was mine, right? You know, I'm big boned. I am big boned, but I'm 38 pounds lighter than I was then. So your story, your limiting belief keeps you from falling through. So what you gotta do is you gotta get yourself in a playful place. I tell people, have you ever been really angry at somebody and then suddenly you remember everything they've ever done that pisses you off? Yes. Or you're really in love and what's wrong with life? When you're totally in love, not that we're broke, who cares? We're in love, right? So those three S's, changing your state, changing your story, and changing your strategy is how you make a shift. I want to apply some of your thoughts to real life situations. That's right. okay. I've got some audience members. So we're going to start that. with Teresa. Come on over. Perfect. Teresa, if you can join us. There she is. All right. So meet Tony. Oh, this is so quiet walking over <laughs> here. You can <laughs> feel it. So, Hi. Let me turn Hi. you over here so Thank they can you. see you all. So go ahead, Teresa. Share your story. I'll get Tony to work on it. Tony, I feel like I am a hamster on a wheel. I live paycheck to paycheck. I have twins who are in their second year of college. Yes. My younger one is going to college next year. And I feel trapped. I'm stressed. And I never pictured my life the way it is now. Are you paying for your twins' college tuition? Yes, I am. So um, easy for someone on the outside to talk about it, right? Because your physical stress and emotional stress I know right. is real. But if you really want to change it, then you have to make some new choices. And right now, the story you have, we all are affected by the story we tell ourselves. So we have metaphors. Some people say, you know, I'm at the end of my rope. And I'll go, OK, put it down and come over here. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Yours is I'm a hamster on a wheel. And how many times do you tell yourself that? Every day. Every day. Every day. And so that's what you feel. See, so whatever we tell ourselves, we experience. So here's the truth. There's a couple options for you. One of those options is you have to understand that you can still be financially free, but somehow, even though it seems impossible, mm -hmm. you got to take a small percentage of what you have and pretend the government put a tax on you. You'd hate that tax. You'd swear you won't pay that tax, but they'd still take the money. Right. So I'll give you an example. There's a man named Theodore Johnson. He worked for uh, UPS. He never made more than $14,000 in an entire year in his life. That's the wow. most he ever made. At 70 years old, he's worth $70 million. Oof. 
How is that possible? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, how is that possible? <laughs> I'll tell you, when they asked Warren Buffett, I asked him, what made you the richest man in the world? He said, living in America where there's opportunity, good genes, so I lived a long time, and compound interest. And we've all heard of compound interest, but what this man did is his friend said to him, she said, I can't save any money, I have no money, same as you're feeling right now, and I know it's true. You do have money, you're just not putting it in the places that can get you ahead. So that's why you're the hamster on the wheel. And what his friend said is, we're gonna take a tax, 20% of your money you're never gonna see. And it's gonna go in this investment account. And when, over the years, it compounds, and it's amazing what it does. Second thing for you, I know you're not gonna like this one. What if your twins had to actually pay for some of that college education themselves? So what I want you to do is I want you to find no less than a minimum of 10%, Okay. and as much ideally as 15%. So if you will make that promise, I will get someone to coach you and get you to follow through. Promise. Will you make it happen? Yeah. <laughs> and we got one last victim for you, Tony. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Should I'm I come okay. down? You can stay right there, you're about the right height now. <laughs> you're not evil now. <laughs> okay, Tony, so my issue is that I'm a mother of three. I have three boys. And every time I get my bills, my credit card bills, anything like that, I just, I just leave them in the mailbox. I don't, I don't even take them out the mailbox because it's just so stressful, all yes. these bills and, you know, debt like that. So, you know, what is the best solution or... What do you think is the best solution? Well, I mean, I've been hearing what you're, you're saying about saving percentage, you know, a piece of your income every time. But it's, you know, that's kind of really hard to reach that goal when you have children or other you know, you know, limited situations. So how do you handle that? Well, it starts with changing that belief. It's not, not true that you don't have children, it's not hard, right? We all know that's true. The story you have that says, I have three children and so it's really hard, mm -hmm. the more you tell yourself, the more you can't do anything. It's like hypnosis. Mm -hmm. You're hypnotized into it's so hard I can't. It is hard and you can. Okay. You can, but we got to start small and get momentum. That's the piece that we got to do for you. And for you right now, what you really need to do is get someone who's going to come kick your butt a little bit. You need somebody who's going to not take this stuff. Because here's the challenge. When you surround yourself with girlfriends, the beauty of feminine women yeah. is they support each other. But the challenge with that is you can support each other and feeling good and then not change. So we need two things. No more story and a new game plan. If you're up for it, I'll get someone who will actually coach you. Oh, I'm, I'm up for it. How about um, also... Maybe uh, saying something about the guy part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that has something. All right, we're gonna do. You know, Tony's gonna create all kinds of good ideas for all you guys to take advantage of. Tony, thank you very much. Thank Wonderful you so advice. Much. Check out Tony Robbins' latest book called Money Master the Game. We'll be right back. Thank you, brother. Next, it's the fastest growing cancer, especially among women, thyroid cancer. But is it a true epidemic or has it just been undetected? And can you trust the treatments? Learn the facts and how to lower your risk. Coming up next. In the medical spotlight, a controversial point of view about a disease that has nearly tripled in the last 40 years among women. You're about to meet an endocrinologist who says most thyroid cancers should not be treated. And she says she has a science to prove it. Dr. Florence Comite is here. Now, this is the study she pointed me to. It expresses concerns that most of the increased incidence represents overdiagnosis, the detection of cancers that are not destined to cause symptoms or death. So Dr. Kamate, is this an epidemic of disease uh, or is it really more of an epidemic of diagnosis? A epidemic of diagnosis, that's what it really is. We have technology now to look very closely at the thyroid and we can pick up lesions that are really tiny, like the size of your thumbnail. Let me show you an example of why we're finding them so frequently. So the thyroid nodules, or you know, the thyroid gland, you know where that is, it's in, the, in your neck, and there's an image of what it normally looks like. Those little yellow things are the parathyroid glands, glands around the thyroid. That's normal. Now, they can be solid or they can be fluid-filled. Either way, we look at them, we want to know what's in them. So these nodules, because they're so common, one in three people have them, become concerning to us, and we get scans, and this is an example of one of these scans. You notice that the area with the red circle around it is the area that doesn't have the sort of the buildup of color, there's, the, there's no white there, that's because that nodule is not working. It's yeah. not behaving like thyroid tissue. So Dr. Kamate, if I were to get a nodule and get one of these scans and I show that area, that nodule, that, that doesn't ref, that reflect working tissue, what's the diagnosis, what could it be? It could be cancer. In 75 or 80% of the time it might be, but that terminology is misleading because actually these don't go on and cause damage and they're very slow growing. So of all the ones that we pick up, fewer than 1% actually lead to any kind of damage long term. Fewer than 1%? 1%. 
So all of these people that were taken care of, only 1% of them would have actually lost their life or been harmed significantly. Exactly. In fact, if you live to the age of 80, 90% of us will have thyroid nodules. Very common. So how do we deal with the reality there as a doctor, if I give you a diagnosis that you have cancer, it's sort of hard for me to tell you to go home and just watch it. It is hard, but we do that in other cases too. We do that in prostate, we do that in skin lesions, where we look at changes and we monitor. It's a field that we have begun to call active surveillance. Just like all this technology picks up lesions and things we might not have seen before, little glitches in our system, we have the ability to follow that and monitor it and take good care of ourselves. So let me share the risk factors for thyroid cancer with all of you. It's women, ages 20 to 55, so middle-aged women, people with a family history, and folks who have a diet that's low in iodine. So let's just take a scenario of a 25-year-old young woman, healthy, whole life's in front of her, comes mm -hmm. into a doctor, is going to be told she has cancer because historically that's what we've said. How do you convince someone that they should live their whole life with this disease? Great question. How would I talk about it? First of all, I would say it's not really cancer. It's a glitch in your system that deserves to be monitored. And let me tell you what it means to have your thyroid out. Not only do we take the whole thyroid out, sometimes we do a lobectomy, meaning we remove part of the thyroid, but then afterwards, sometimes we have to do radiation therapy. And so we're shutting your thyroid down completely, we're replacing it with thyroid hormone, and then you have to be monitored for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And frankly, from my perspective, I'd rather my system and my organs take over and take care of me rather than artificially giving somebody hormones if they don't need it. Well, I get that we shouldn't treat all cancers equally. We're actually taught that um, at some exactly. level of our career, although unfortunately most of us, when we hear about cancer, think it should all be treated the same way. Cut it out, get rid of it. You mentioned prostate cancer as an example where we've really reversed path a little bit and exactly. don't go so aggressively after some of these things. So let's say we take this provocative approach of not having a thyroid tumor removed. Mm -hmm. Some might call it cancer, some might call it precancer or whatever. Yep. Uh, what do we do? How do we monitor you? How do we take you for the next 60 years of your life and make sure you don't develop a cancer that could hurt you? Great question. So what you want to do is you want to look at diagnostic tests that showed us it in the first place. So ultrasound mm -hmm. is a good test. You want to follow thyroid hormones. You want to also keep your life, you want to be aware of your sleep, your nutrition. You want to make sure that you eat foods that have iodine, selenium, vitamin A. You want to monitor things. And usually at the beginning, just like in prostate, just like in skin lesions and molds, you're seen more often, like let's say every six months. But as things don't change and your system stays stable, you can go longer and longer periods and you'll be fine, most likely. So I called some of my colleagues um, at New York Presbyterian and not surprisingly, they felt this was a fairly radical proposal. Uh, they've uh, believed that you should take these out because they think they're saving lives and that's what I've always been told as well. At what point should you operate then? At what point with monitoring should you say, okay, you know what, we've watched you long enough, I'm worried we should operate. Can I take a phone call and call my colleagues at Yale? Please do. <laughs> okay. um, Would they agree with you or me? It, it's a torn field right now because there's a study from Mayo, Mayo that showed that we should rename the condition, not call it cancer, mm -hmm. call it glitches, call it slight abnormalities in the cells that need monitoring. So I agree that it is a little scary to say to somebody, you have cancer, we need to do something about it. Instead of saying, let's look at the risk and the benefits of having surgery versus not having surgery and doing what we call active surveillance. The data has looked very good for prostate. There are a lot of men out there now who don't have the complications of prostate surgery. If you need the surgery, or if you have a family history of thyroid, if you've been exposed to radioactive iodine, then you might reconsider and want to be more aggressive. So it's a balancing act, and each one of us has to look at, us, at ourselves with our doctor in partnership, maybe get a second opinion, so that we do the right thing. Thank you very much for your advice. I'll be right back. Next, do you try to eat healthy but struggle with bland, boring meals? That changes today. We're revealing tried and true flavor enhancers for your favorite dinnertime staples. Boost taste and keep calories low for all your meals. Next. People who save their own lives. You are cancer free. And now are saving others. You have to save someone else's life after someone has saved yours. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. If you consider yourself a healthy eater, you probably strive for balanced meals, right? You want a little bit of protein, you want some veggies, some starch. 
But how many times a week can you eat grilled chicken or steamed broccoli before you start banging your head against the wall? And we've all been there. So today I've enlisted Julia Collin Davison from America's Test Kitchen to show us some low calorie flavor boosters that change any meal that you're gonna make. Welcome to the show, Julia. Thank you for having me. So why is it that we automatically assume that all these good foods have to be blunt, boring and bland and tasteless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've all been trained to recognize fat as flavor. Things like butter, sour cream, cheese, bacon. And when you start to eat healthy, you take that back off the plate and you think you're left with bland food. But that's not the case. Not all flavors are fatty. All right, so today, Joy's going to reveal the, tri the Test Kitchen's tried and true flavors for your favorite dinnertime staples. We're going to do proteins, we're going to do veggies, and we're going to do starches. Let's start with the first dinnertime staple, which is protein. Adria is here. How are you? Hi, Dr. Oz. So what dinnertime protein are you bored by? So I'm bored with my chicken. I love chicken. Mm -hmm. It's my healthy, lean protein. I make it most nights of the week, but my husband is like, chicken again? <laughs> he is thinks it's dry, it's bland. I usually... Bake it, cook it in the crock pot. My go-to flavors are salt, pepper, water. I don't know how to make it interesting. Water. Yeah, That's I right. don't know. The I tears, just, the tears of a chef. It's always dry, so I definitely need some help making it more flavorful, mm -hmm. making it more interesting so that he so gets Julia, excited about chicken. Yep. I want it to be surefire yep. so yeah. it works, and I want it to be low calorie as well. Okay. Take it away. So the three things I want you to try, fennel, oranges mm -hmm. and tarragon. Now fennel right. is a vegetable. This is what it looks like in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Often overlooked. Let me show you how to cut it up real fast. Now you can eat it cooked, you can eat it raw, you can throw it in your salads, you can throw it into the pot with the onions when you're making soup or a stew and it'll add a nice flavor. The flavor's clean, grassy, a little bit licorice. And so what you want to do is cut off the stalks and then you want to cut it in half and then you can see this core right there mm -hmm. in the center. Oh, yeah, you see, the yeah, core you see that core? You just want to cut that out. You can just use the tip of the knife and you cut it out, mm -hmm. and then you lay it down and you slice away. And I like washing it after I slice it because the water can really get away all the dirt that's inside the vegetable. So okay. that is how you prep fennel. And here I'm gonna show you how to make a quick dinner using these three flavor boosters. And if you think about oranges. It tastes like licorice. It does mm -hmm. taste like licorice, or anise. Now oranges, most people are used to, you know, throwing a lime wedge or a lemon wedge on the side of the plate. Mm -hmm. You think about oranges, nice balance of acid and sweet, and it has more moisture, so it can help dry things uh, taste more moist. Good. So what we're gonna do, and again, tarragon, and if you've ever used tarragon, pairs really nicely. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, isn't that nice? Well, that's good. Again, yeah. a little bit of that anise flavor pairs very well with fennel. And fresh herbs, crucial for a low fat flavor booster. Whether you use parsley or basil or cilantro, any of those. So you don't want here. us to get the, the, this dried, it has no. to be fresh. Fresh stuff, and fresh stuff really will have that clean flavor you're looking for. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I put some tarragon in this little bit of vinaigrette, and we're gonna toss a little bit of this with the fennel and a little with the oranges. You want to mix that up for me, Dr. Oz? I'm very good at mixing. <laughs> you, know. Here, you get the okay. mix up. You mix, mix that one. Metal. All right, and what I'm going to show you an en papillote method. That means baked in a packet. And mm -hmm. so if you think about it, instead of the crock pot where yeah. the water's washing away flavor, all the juices are going to stay in the packet and make a sauce. That's great. Yeah, so what we're going to do is put this fennel on the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to use a portion of it because this is enough for a whole recipe. Oh, great. And we're going to take- you want any of mine? I do want, yes. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I'm going to put the chicken right on top. Top. Now the oranges. Yeah. And as the oranges heat up, the juice is going to come out. It's going to baste the chicken and make a really nice mm. sauce. Your mm -hmm. husband's going to love this. I know, I'm so excited. You're take the leftovers and home it's today. Not too, I will. And it's not too challenging. <laughs> no, yeah. you can do this up to three hours in advance Great. and keep it in the fridge and just pop it in the oven. Mm -hmm. It takes about 25 minutes to bake. Oh, okay. So you just fold Perfect. up the corners of the foil like this. Again, you want to make an airtight packet. And you can throw carrots in there like I did. Oh. You can sprinkle some scallions yeah, you, over you top. You do the tasting. I will. Now, can you make this, with, use the same technique for meats and fish and yeah. the like? Yeah, it works very well with fish or shellfish. Mm. Throw a piece of cod or a piece of tilapia in there. Works this just as well. This is so delicious. Isn't that good? And it's I'm that. I'm so excited well, about this. The delicious part, actually, we haven't talked about yet. It's 50 calories per serving. It's amazing. So take, a, yeah. take that home. Take that home with you. Really? I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, so we're going to move over to the dinner time staple of vegetables, which everyone tries hard to work with. Jennifer's joining us. So what's been the big challenge with you and vegetables? Well, my go-to vegetable is broccoli, but um, how I used to cook it would either be to steam it or boil it. Mm -hmm. When I steamed it, it came out too hard and I would have to add a ton of butter for it to even taste good. And if I boiled it, it came out too mushy and I would have to add a ton of salt to the water to make it taste good. So I've nixed all of that and I do just microwavable frozen veggies now. <laughs> Which is actually a good buy, but I don't mm -hmm. like taste that much. But here's, yeah, here's it, what you're, really bland. You share with us a photo. This is the freezer at Jennifer's home. One frozen... <laughs> 
box of veggies after another. So, Julia, what are the <laughs> Pest Kitchen's <laughs> secrets for the perfect vegetable? Well, st first of all, start with fresh broccoli. And you can buy it already prepped in those bags, so you don't even have to do anything to it. It'll have much better flavor and a better texture. I think that frozen stuff gets a little mushy. Yeah. And the three flavor boosters I want you to try out are ginger, garlic, and sesame oil. Now, sesame oil is a fat. But it's a really flavorful fat, so a little goes a long way. You yeah. make a paste out of them like That's this? That's right. Yeah, this is a combination of grated fresh ginger, garlic, and that sesame oil. And what I have here is some broccoli. And what we did is we browned the broccoli early it on. really good. Yes. <laughs> so, and then we put three tablespoons of water, put mm -hmm. the lid on. And here you go, nonstick skillet. So you want to use a <laughs> wooden trying. utensil so you don't ruin the nonstick skillet. You, you scratch see. it, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so we browned it first, and mm -hmm. we added water, put the lid on, steamed it through till it's cooked. Now we're gonna add the flavor booster. Clear the center of the skillet, so push the broccoli to the sides, add the flavor booster right to the hot skillet, and then I want you to mash it into the pan with the paddle. And you'll see the flavor of the garlic and the ginger really start oh. to bloom. And this is good for stir fries. See, this I is a great dumped it on the top. I would have. <laughs> yeah, you want that flavor booster to really hit the hot pan and bloom. And then you can start to smell it. You can smell the sesame oil yeah. and the ginger and the garlic. And now you can start to stir it into the broccoli. Now give it a taste. This is what, the not, not so hot <laughs> version of that. I want to make sure you'll be happy with the, what we're telling you today. No, the flavors are really good. Yeah. I would have never thought to use sesame oil. Though. Yes. Yeah. It can you make works. a batch of it like earlier, like a larger amount, or should totally. you just make it no. as you cook you it? You could do a big batch of this, keep it in your fridge for about a week, and then just dollop it in as you need to. And at 34 calories a serving, you'll be absolutely oh, doing nice. that. Oh, <laughs> nice. All right, no dinner would be complete. No dinner would be complete without a little bit of starch. Nadine, what's your favorite choice? My favorite choice is baked potato. Mm. I have two kids, and we normally just do pasta. Mm -hmm. I have a very hectic schedule, so I normally would call my son and say, throw the potato in the oven. <laughs> All right. Add a little butter, and that would be the flavor, but you know, they're tired of that now. They got, that's the dilemma, they're tired yes, of it. that's the mm. dilemma. All right, so here's a picture of your son being tired with his potato. Look, look, look how uninspired he is with that. Yes. He's just being, he's Aww. trying to be a good kid. All right, Julie. <laughs> Pest Kitchen Secrets, what would yep. you do? I'm gonna ask you to try some chili powder, some okay. cilantro, and some scallions. And the okay. other thing I want you to do is maybe go away from a baked potato. So we're gonna move to red potatoes. Okay. And with red potatoes, you have just more opportunity to add flavor as they cook. Okay. So you can cut these potatoes ahead of time, because you said you were busy. Yes. You can cut them and you can store them in water for up to two days in your fridge. Okay. Come home, drain them, toss them with a little oil, salt, and pepper, just a little veg oil. Yes. Put them on the pan, and the trick is the foil. You saw how they were covered with foil. Cover them with foil for about 20 minutes. Okay. And then you want to peel the foil off. You, see, you sprinkle on the seasonings, and you let them go for another 25 minutes or so to get nice and brown. And then your fresh herbs at the end. Oh, very good. Yeah. Would you make a switch with your family? I, absolutely. But you I know, think they'll be happy too. Well, let's find out for sure, because okay. Nadine's son, Nicholas, is actually here. Nicholas, please join us if you don't mind. I, kids will always tell you the truth. Yes. So both of you, go ahead and taste it. Hi, Nicholas. Give, give it a taste if you want. And we, you taste it, too. Both of you I taste it. Go ahead. Sure. I, want, I want some honest opinions here. Mm. Let me taste it, too. Let's see what you guys think. I'm going to go. What do you think? It's real good. It's oh, good. I got and a smile. Really good. 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 And a smile. <laughs> That'll make you happy. <laughs> yeah. These are flavor boosters. Eight calories, my friends. Eight calories. You're not giving up anything by making this way. You don't have to have any toppings. And even the kids will like it. It has a lot of flavor to it, too. I'm better very, than what I have. <laughs> well, you're very kind to say that. Congratulations to the test kitchen. All these Thank techniques you. will be at DrOz.com, and you can amp up your meals in a very clever way because everyone in the studio is going home with a copy of America's Test Kitchen's new book, The New Family Cookbook. It is encyclopedic. We'll be right back. That's for you. Their storybook marriage has been challenged by one of the most devastating diagnoses in medicine. But even brain cancer may prove no match for their love. The inspiring story of how to keep positivity and strength in your life, coming up next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? Make your appointment today. Go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. Love conquers all. It's as true as any law of physics, and it's the reason that I want you to meet Mary and Angelo. Their storybook marriage has been challenged by one of the most devastating diagnoses in medicine. But even brain cancer, they prove no match for their love. 
Oh my God, that's a haircut Joey hated. Do you remember that? Oh, that? good. <laughs> yeah, you're golfing, you look great. Theirs is an all-American love story. Angel and I met when we were probably about 15 years old. I just loved their smile. We ended up working at um, the same restaurant in town, and that's where it kind of blossomed. But they married young and faced a lot of early challenges. We were 19 when we got married. <sighs> Wasn't that young? Very young. Oh my gosh. The demands of being 22, 23 years old with two little kids, it yeah. really took a toll on both of us. Their storybook marriage collapsed under the weight. We decided that we'd go our separate ways, but the time apart actually gave us a lot of time to grow up. We got married again, and it was beautiful. We were so happy to be together. Soon after, we were pregnant with number three. <laughs> But then, at the height of their happiness, they faced their biggest challenge of all. August of 2013, Angel was acting differently. He was complaining he had a really massive headache and he was having a hard time with words and forgetting a lot of things. A neurologist recommended Angel would have a MRI. I could see on the technician's face something was seriously wrong. Something was seriously wrong. Angelo had a rare form of brain cancer called glioblastoma multiform, or GBM. We met with our doctor and um, he said it's an aggressive tumor. It was going to be surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Once we found out what the pathology was, we knew um, the prognosis wasn't great to treat this. Unfortunately, it's not to cure it. It's just to prolong life. We're gonna repeat after me now, okay? Speedometer. Mm -hmm. Speedometer. Good. GBM is horrific. Angel's not the same person that he was a year and a half ago. We're all determined to make people just aware that it's a neglected cancer. Angelo and Mary may be running out of time but they vowed to make the most of every moment they have left. We're not gonna let this beat us. We're going to make sure we give it our all. We have to. We have to. We promised each other. <laughs> right? Mary and Angelo are here. Everybody, this is really a story about love and time. Thank you for sharing it with us. Angelo, how are you doing? Good. Good. I'm doing better, you guys, thank you. <laughs> So Mary, you, you, you guys met at age 15. We did. You thought you'd grow old together. Do you ever ask, why us, why now? Um, we do, a lot. <laughs> but um, we're determined to fight through this, and uh, with each other, I think we'll be OK. Well, let's say that, if you can, a little bit differently, cause only because I know you use the word celebration a lot. Yeah, I do. And you want to <laughs> have every day make a celebration, because you know, this is a very precious time. You appreciate time. I see this in my own practice when people have difficult diagnoses. It makes them think differently about how time passes us by sometimes. Right. I'd love you just to look at your wonderful husband. <laughs> I, I mean, you have limited time together. What would you just like him to hear? That I love him and I will love him forever and we're going to fight through this together. So I got an idea. <laughs> An idea how we could all chip in a little bit. I want to shine a light on love. <laughs> so I want everyone at home to take a light bulb, hold it over your heads, take a selfie. Now, I'm going to take mine right here. <laughs> um, and I actually started this for you. Because I think sometimes you don't appreciate the power of love. Because mm -hmm. it's in all of our lives all the time. And we only really understand it when we have this kind of a deep bond brought on by a crisis. So mm -hmm. we took the liberty of getting together people who care about you. Some familiar faces for you. you know, these are their selfies. Extended family, close friends, neighbors. Right. People have touched your life and you've touched theirs. Right. It's beautiful. So audience, I want you all to do this. I'm going to bring some, some bulbs up to you. I'll be right back. Don't... Who wants a light bulb? Take a light bulb selfie. Yeah. There you go. Get you going up here. And I want you all taking selfies with these. You pass that around there. Just don't break them. 
Here's one. So here's the deal. Take a selfie with a light bulb above your head, tag it with three friends, and then hashtag shine a light challenge to show the love you have for the people in your life. Remind them how precious we are. And one little tip, I, I always want to do this once in a while. I look in the faces of the people that I really love and I remember what they really look like. Because sometimes we forget, which is crazy, but we're reminded by Angelo's wonderful story how precious life is. So let that light shine bright just like Angelo's and Mary's has, has done. And for more information on brain cancer and how you can find a cure, you can go to the American Brain Tumor Association. We'll be right back. A special one hour Dr. Oz. Are you ready for this? I feel amazing. Life saving stories. You are cancer free. Life changing facts. I want everyone watching out there to know the signs of a heart attack. People who saved their own lives and now are saving others. You have to save someone else's life after someone has saved yours. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Blue season and I have a quiz for our audience. Y'all ready? Here's the quiz. According to a recent study, kissing for 10 seconds is long enough to transfer how many bacteria between mouths? Is it 80 bacteria, 80,000 bacteria, or 80 million bacteria? What do you guys think? Lots of 80,000, a few people think optimistically 80. The answer, of course, is 80 million bacteria are transferred. Just a 10 second kiss. But well, here's the good news. Those bacteria might not just make you sick. They might actually be good for you by exposing you to more types of bacteria. It turns out that kissing actually can help you boost your immune system by helping you keep your health intact. It's pretty cool, I think. So maybe it's not the most romantic thing to think about before you smooch, but it's worth keeping in mind. Keep kissing. Now it's time for In Case You Missed It. First, don't let your financial stress become emotional or physical stress. It can happen to all of us. Before Tony Robbins was Tony Robbins, he was down to his last $19 and eating his way through his troubles. The best way to stave off the stress and the pounds is to change your strategy and your story. You're gonna change your strategy by making your money and modeling it and how you're making it after someone who's accomplished what you're after. You're gonna change your story by looking at the limitations that you have in your life and stop talking about them and start talking about the empowering realities of your life. And stop forcing yourself to eat boring, bland food just because you think it's healthy. Butter, fat, and cheese, and bacon, they're all the things we talk about. They're not the only ways to make things tasty. Some great low-cal flavor boosters that will transform any food are ginger, garlic, and sesame oil. You can use these either together or separately. They're especially delicious on some steamed broccoli, especially when a little bit browned. And they add only 34 calories all together. Finally, be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products. I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, you can go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time.